Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Joining me now are Mohamed Ibrahim Gamawa, who is a resource person for the Islamic movement of Nigeria. Thank you for joining us in today's program. To his left is no stranger to the Osasu Show, Deji Adeonju, who is a human rights activist. Thank you for joining Thank us. You're most welcome. So tell me, in the past few days, we've seen an increase in the clash between the military and the, Shi the members of the Islamic movement of Nigeria, the Shiites. So can you tell me what exactly is going on? Well, uh, the word clash is something I don't really like. Uh, it was an open day massacre of innocent citizens in this country. On Saturday, I think we usually, uh, for the past uh, six, seven years, we used to embark on the Arab trek, which symbolizes the 40 days of the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, which happened some 1,300 years. I remember yesterday, um, there were 50 million people in Karbala, where the graveyard of uh, Imam Hussein was. And we used to carry that exercise. Some would come from Kano. The last one in the the last one that took place when Sheikh Zaki was freed, we witnessed uh, seven million people in Zaria, some from Kaduna, some from uh, Kano, some from all the local corners of that place. Now with the arrest of Sheikh Ibrahim Al Zaki against the court order in Nigeria, we decided to do the trek to Abuja. Uh, we started from uh, uh, from Sulita. Uh, we were moving, we were almost 500,000 uh, people from Sulita. We trekked down to uh, Zuba. And when we had, I was there personally, when we heard that there were uh, two trucks of the Niger, three trucks of the Nigerian army, we avoided them. We took another way. So we came out close to Zuba Garage. Now, we finished the DPO around where the DPO of the Republican State uh, Police Station was there, along with these people. They were waving us and we were waving them equally. Now, we finished everything, we were praying on the side of the road. Because we saw the army that we avoided coming. They went and turned, and it's completely a lie that they were carrying out with. It's a lie. So, they passed. After a few minutes, they came back. And they came back, they parked their vehicles on the, uh, by the filling station and they started shooting. So, if somebody is saying that we are retaliating with uh, stones, uh, that would be that's a lack of effort. Well, we saw videos of the Shiites throwing stones and also burning a police car. But it's a crowded. No, you are. You are, you are uh, we, I'm talking about what happened on Saturday. Okay. okay. This is what happened on Monday. Yes, yes. Where the. Where, the, where it happened on Saturday was a very crowded place. Mm -hmm. How do you know who this is a this and not at? And at the same time, there's what, he, what, what the lawyers call extent of provocation. Mm -hmm. Here is a child, a, a boy, a student whom you kill his uh, parents, and now he's out of school and he is demonstrating, uh, showing his anger against what happened so that a due process can be followed and then you come and start shooting him. Deji, you've led several protests, which has not, most of them have not led to the death of those who are protesting with you. What exactly went wrong here? You see, we must not forget that there was a time that the Shiites were not even protesting. They were in court. You know, a wrong was perpetrated in December 2015. They sought justice, you know, at the courts. They took the federal government to court. The court ruled that they should go and rebuild their worship places and that compensation should be done to Sheikh Zak Zaki and his wife, they should be released unconditionally and all that. And the government refused. You know? So sometimes when people criticize the Shiites, I begin to laugh. No, nobody wins in a religious field. And the reason why we say nobody wins is because, you see, when religion, religion is involved, it's a very delicate issue. Millions and millions die when there's a religious field. And that's why we must be extremely careful. You understand? I keep asking myself, what is the end goal of this government? The end goal, is it to create another Boko Haram? Because if that's the end goal, then fine, then that means they are doing a perfect job at it. But if the end goal is to keep the peace, because our role as concerned Nigeria from the beginning of this crisis has to, we came in to mediate, 
You understand that we are not taking sides with anybody. We just want to ensure that we maintain and keep the peace in the country. I joined the, the rally on Tuesday, you know, which I was one of the people that was leading the rally. And we started the rally from the National Human Rights Commission. And we came down through Ademolade to Kumbo and we wanted to go to the, towards the, the, the Igu Square to just end the rally and address the crowd. And as we got towards the Abia house, unprovoked, the police just opened fire. Not that they were shooting Tiaga, no, they opened fire directly at people. You understand? So when you see that, then you not blame people for reacting. You begin to see, see the hypocrisy. What is the rationale? So you think the reaction yes. of the Shiites were yes. justified? No, I'm not saying it was justified because I was part of those who were pleading. Not. Because when they started shooting, the Shiites started running to pick stones. I was one of those who were, was not prevailing on them mm -hmm. to drop the stones and not react. Because I kept, I've been telling them pub, privately and publicly that the goal is to push them to the wall and get them to react. So that maybe the thing metamorphosized into Boko Haram. And I will give that you brings, That brings me to the historical context of this discussion I would like us to delve into. Mr. Mohammed, um, a story was published in Bloomberg sometime in 2017, which stated that your movement, the Islamic movement of Nigeria, is receiving donations from Iran. Um, and this movement has termed America as the enemy of Islam. What do you have to say about this? One thing is that to make accusation or to publish lies on the pages of the newspapers is very easy, but to prove it, the government wants every reason to descend on the Shiite. And if you are receiving donation from any country, then definitely the donation, the donation must come to a bank or any source. So why can't they publish it? How did the donation come? Our relationship with Iran is nothing short of relationship between the Catholics and, and Rome. Every reverend in this country, up to a cardinal, is being ordained by the Pope. And the Pope is not a Nigerian, it's from Italy. So our relationship is nothing short of that. Every Anglican is being ordained by the Archbishop of Canterbury. And he's not a Nigerian. So if we are Shiite, and majority of Iranian are Shiites, or they are running a Shiite government, we have a relationship with them. Ask me, well, what is my relationship with America? Yes, humanity. If America go wrong, we have to say no to America. We are not servants of anybody. We are fighting a just cause. So uh, taking America as enemy, that is wrong, completely wrong. We have our seniors, we have our institutions in America, in Michigan and the rest, owned by scholars from, Baghdad, uh, from Iraq that are of Shiite extraction. So we are not enemies to any country. So why is it that the Shiite doesn't have the backing or the support of its fellow Muslims. Because we're looking at the director of the Muslim Rights Concern uh, express his group's desire to stay away from this recent protest. Um, they've, demand, they've, they've said um, time without number that they are not a part of this, they will not be part of this, and they will not participate in this. Why do you think that is? I think it's civil. If you compare him to a professor of Wahhabi extraction, who is a lecturer now in the Northwestern University, who wrote several books and say that the Shiite and the Christian don't deserve to live in Nigeria. He's a professor. <laughs> and of recent he wrote a book which he called The Fallacy of Shia Belief. And there he says that the Shiites are lawless and they should be erased from Nigeria. <laughs> Earlier on he wrote a book that the Christians too, Muslims should be armed to kill their fellow Christians. And yet this guy was co-opted as a member of the panel that investigated the Army genocide of the Shiite in Zara. We have many scholars who used to call for destruction of Christian churches. Sometimes, let the government come, we have videos. They will say, yes, we wrote the president a letter and he approved it. I can mention a name if the security wants. I can bring a clips. Why are those people dining and whining with the president government? Why? Because we saw the clash earlier on a couple of years ago in Kaduna with the chief of army staff, where some Shiite members were stoning the convoy of the Shiite, which led to the massacre of several of your members. And the Amnesty International actually came out and spoke against that. Jonathan but was stoned. Jonathan went to OAU. They stoned him. Did you see anybody dying? No. 
But you justify it's not, that a, it's not justification. Yeah, is let's even right. agree that, Osasu, let's agree that some Shiite people were stoned the convoy of the chief of army staff. The incident happened that afternoon. Why did the chief of army staff, why did, they, why did soldiers go back in the night? After they killed people at that incident, why did they now go back in the night of the same day? And the next morning, and they killed over a thousand people. Why? That is mass murder. Why did they go to bury these people that were killed in mass graves? The army has admitted that. So, you see, when you see injustice happening to somebody, and you say, because I'm not a Shiite, or because, no, I'm not a Sunni, or, the injustice is going to come and chop off your own head as well. So the reason why many of us are speaking is because we, see, tyrants all over the world, they use the same system. We have seen the hand of tyranny in this. And we know where this is going. And we know that it will not end well. Just like I tell you, I say nobody wins in a religious field. Since I even want to make a point there. Now you say we are people, as, let's say we are violent. Now I can stand and tell the whole world that out of all the terrorist organizations in the whole world, there is no single Shiite terrorist organization. <laughs> and now, back to the Chief of Amistad. There was a coup that killed a president, a head of state, sitting head of state, in person of Dimka, in person of Murtala Muhammad, who killed General Bukhar, uh, Bukhar Dimka. At the time he killed Murtala, during the coup, his wife was speared, his children were spared, his tribe was spared, nobody went on, on rampage. The army was not sent to Lantan or uh, Plateau to go and wipe the Plateau people. He himself, the chief of army staff, in that drama, came to Abuja to tell human rights that he killed seven and passed. Now, what took them to three, uh, five kilometers away after the killings? What took them to our graveyard where we bury our matas? which is eight kilometers away, in the night and in the, the next morning. What happened? So the point, it was pre-planned, and thank God we get the wing of it last uh, this year, the beginning of this year, when the prince of Saudi Arabia, that the crown prince, said it openly in America, that of his one-year achievement as a crown prince, he succeeded in destroying the Shiite community in Nigeria. Bin Salman caught me, go and check. He said it. Nobody has, uh, no minister in Nigeria that deny that. Nobody from the presidency will say, no, it's not true. We wonder, is this country an independent nation where a small country like Saudi Arabia, that its population is no more than the population up to the population of Kano State? Their crown prince will openly say his achievement, he succeeded in destroying the Shiite community. Is that video evidence? Of course, yes. We can get it. So my question is what the solution is moving forward. The reason I asked about the perception, the label, the tag on the Shiites is because I need us to look at the behavioral consequences, right? What exactly is it that we can do better? Because I know you're just attributing this to the government, but we also have to look at what exactly the other forces, the yes. other participants are doing and what we can do moving forward to ensure that we curtail this menace. You see, you see, in moving forward, the solution is very simple. Remo release Zagzaki. The Shiites must do better. Like I always tell them pri privately and, and publicly, they must do better. Yes, we know that people are angry. People, people lost their relatives. People's homes were destroyed. People's lives were cut short. So many things, they continue to kill them, even despite the fact that for almost two years they went to court, they did not do anything. You know, we know that the government has been completely lawless and all that, but the Shiites must do better. You know, they must be exemplary. They must, you know, make sure that they don't, because the goal is to push them to that point where they react, so they must do better. Secondly, Nigeria is a secular state. Nigeria is not a Sunni nation or a Shia nation or a Christian nation, you understand, or a pagan nation. Nigerians have the right to worship idols. Nigerians, the, the constitution is explicit. The constitution is extremely clear on this. So this whole idea of you know, internalizing a, 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 the Shia Sunni kind of thing on the international scene, they want to bring it to Nigeria and start, because it will affect even us that we are Christians. Because the people that were affected, you know, I was on Tuesday, they, you need to see the police and the army, they were shooting for over 30 minutes. You understand? The people, some people will have been affected psychologically. People got wounded. Several people that did not have any reason. 
you know, to be in, 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 in that situation. So whether we, we, go, we, we choose peace or the government wants to choose war with the Shiites, it will affect the generality of the Nigerian people. And that's why I said in a religious field, millions die. So the government, the government, the box stops on the table of the government. Like I've told the government, bullets will not solve the, this problem. Because you see, the more you kill them, the more they come out. So it's already clear that these people will not stop. The only thing they're asking for is justice. A thousand people were killed. Let's even admit that it's not up to a thousand. The army admitted killing 300 and something. Why is nobody on trial? Those who killed them. And the army also admitted that they buried these people in mass graves. Why is the president, the president came and was defending and was happy about it. So if people are not the put on trial... What do you mean the president was happy about it? The president that? said they touched the chest of a general. He said it on national TV. You asked for the solution. The solution is that this government look lawless in every meaning of the word. So Nigerians, thank God it's an election time. I'm not campaigning about anybody. But Nigerians should choose between a system or a government or leaders that will take them to the war front while they're in peace and look for some a Democrat who can listen to others, who can accept the supremacy of the constitution of Nigeria, who believe that each and every Nigerian has the right to worship whatever he wants to worship. Mm. So the choice is for Nigerians. Mm. In the next uh, few months we are going for election, uh, they have to look, they have to shine their eyes. A government that says, look, well, security is uh, greater than the rule of law. <laughs> they should look for a Democrat. <laughs> So this is your solution to the government. What's your solution and your advice to your fellow Shia? One is, whenever we are demonstrating, uh, demonstrating the, the, the slogan is Obey Court Order. <laughs> I release check it <laughs> Obey Court Order. <laughs> Justice for us. <laughs> definitely we are at the Hague. We are in the World Court. And definitely these people, the perpetrators of this crime, must pay for it. <laughs> We are, uh, they are provoking us to take arms. We are educated people. <laughs> Dropouts cannot provoke us. <laughs> if you need our certificates, we bring them within one minute. No ant can <laughs> eat our certificates. <laughs> so we cannot be misled by blind, blind people who don't have certificates. <laughs> we are professors, we are doctors, some of us are in the military. <laughs> So arms, no for arms. We love this nation and will continue to support genuine leaders that are going to work for the success of Nigeria. So what consequences, what repercussion have you meted out against those who have taken up arms? Those people who threw stones at the police, those people who burnt the police vehicles. What has the IMN leadership done to checkmate that? Oza, let me tell you one thing. When the panel was put in place by Nasser Arafat, they invited the policeman, uh, police, who represented the police to come and talk at the panel. He said, at that time we were communicating with Sheikh Zedek, the how they say, who are you communicated, communicating with? He said, we have our people. The, the, the spokesperson of the director of the SSS said, in the Hosseinia, we were communicating with them. The, the judge, the, the, the Honorable Justice asked him, who are you communicated, communicating with? He said, we have our people in. So within us, we know we have some security men. And uh, you come to a densely populated area like uh, Nyanya and start opening fire. Uh, using every sort of might that is in your position that was not applied in Boko Haram places. Or oh, headsmen. Headsmen. So now you expect the masses within who you left in February with hunger not to retaliate. How do we, uh, is Shiite written on our foreheads? That is that's it. So, so we disassociate ourselves. It happened eight months ago. They put one of their vehicles uh, on fire at uh, Vega Junction. We went to court. Let them go to court and prove that we are the ones. So you're claiming this, the people Absolutely. who did this are not part we of it? We are too many to set one vehicle on fire. We would have <laughs> set all their vehicles on fire. That's our mission. We were too many to do that. We are more than 700,000 yesterday in this place. So for them to say we set only one vehicle on fire. <laughs> Mohammed Deji, thank you so much for thank your time. You for this seems like show. 
of course my pleasure it seems like an ongoing conversation yes. and as i said we all have to look within what yes. we can do also yes. to ensure that we curtail this menace yes. that's it for today's program don't forget to sign up for the second edition of the Osasu Show Symposium. It's holding on November 22nd from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Uh, register on our website, tostvnetwork.com, and don't forget to follow us on social media at the Osasu Show, at TOSTV Network, at the Osasu Show Foundation, and at Osasu Edmanadian on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'll see you same time, same place next week, and until then, take very good care of yourself. God bless you.